We have seen how we can create a data frame from simpler data structures. But in reality, when we work with large amounts of data, it may be impractical to generate data using this method. Typically, we're going to have data that has already been saved in some other sort of file. We're going to look now at how we can read data from files into data structures within R. A very typical, typical form for tabular data to be found in is called delimited files. Delimited files are simple text files where the values of the data are separated by some kind of text character and then each line, each line that has a hard return on it represents a new line in the table. The most common kind of delimited file is a CSV file. CSV stands for comma separated values and that's because the uh, character that delimits the fields in the file is a comma. But there are also files where the fields are delimited by tabs and those are called tab separated values. One reason why delimited files are popular is they're way more simpler than Excel files. Excel files have a lot of extra data to store information about things like what color rows are and what was the last cell you clicked on and things like that. Those sorts of details are not stored in CSV files. And because CSV files are so much more simpler and do not depend on any sort of proprietary software to open, they are very commonly used for archiving data. Um, if you want to create CSV files, there are a number of ways to do this. One of them is to export an Excel file as CSV format. Um, it's also highly recommended to use other programs like LibreOffice or OpenOffice, um, which generally have fewer problems reading and writing to CSV files than Excel does. There are three ways that you can read in a CSV file. All three of these methods use the read.csv function in order to read the data into a data frame. There are three different ways that this can be done. One is to specifically give the file path to uh, the location on your hard drive where the file is found. One problem with this though is that it's platform dependent. So for example, if you are using a program where the files are designated using Lin the Linux system, then you have things like tilde for your home directory, but that symbol will not work on a, a Windows computer. Whereas Windows computers have uh, drive letters with colon numbers, those won't generally work on Macs. Although it's convenient, especially if you're running a script over and over again, to hard code the path to the file that you want to open, it's not so good to read files in this manner if you're going to share them with someone else and you don't know what kind of file system that person is going to use. In that case, it's easier and better to include inside the read CSV function another function called file.choose. File.choose will open a file selection dialog and let the user uh, locate the CSV file before R tries to open it. So this makes it much more extensible to any user. However, if you're running the script many times, it becomes annoying to have to go through the file selection dialog every time. The best solution is to pass a URL into the read CSV function. The advantage of this is it's not at all platform dependent and also it is easy to accomplish. The difficult part is to get the file onto the internet, but I recommend using uh, GIST, which is a feature of GitHub. It allows you to very easily put files on the internet that can then be accessed through a URL. I can use the file.choose version of reads.csv to locate the file that I want to load on my local computer. Let's try it out. So you can see that this has opened up a file dialog box and I can use whatever the normal way is that I navigate on my computer to find the file that I want. In this case, the file that I want is in the documents directory. 
So I will just go to test.csv, click open, and now I can see that it has read the data file into the frame called my data frame. Let's go ahead and clear that out, clear this out. If I want, I can load a similar file with a very long URL off of the internet. Let's try that. So as you can see, it has loaded this file again, but with much less effort because I didn't have to navigate to find where the file was. If I want to use a file that's in a specific location on my hard drive, I can just hard code it. In this case, the file that I want to open is in my user directory. That's what this tilde right here means. So if I just run this, it finds the file from my user directory and loads it once again as the data frame that I want. If you don't know what your working directory is, you can perform this command, get wd, and that will tell you where your working directory, your current working directory is. So this is telling me that it's basically my user folder. Uh, if I want, I can set the working directory using this command. If I want to load a file that's in my working directory, I don't need to specify any path or URL or the file open command. I can just simply put the file name in there. And so since I've established that my working directory is my home directory and I know this file is in there, it should also, I should also be able to load it by just doing this command here. And we see that I was again successful at loading it.